Welcome to this lesson on how to create the dependencies or relationship between our project activities. Uh, if you take a look in the last lesson, we're taking a look at how to add the activities as well as the duration. Please, you can consider taking a look at the previous lessons to know exactly how we got to this point. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to create the predecessors or the relationship between our project activities. Don't forget that our reference brief, of course, is this simple schedule that we have here. So we are literally trying to replicate what we have in this very table. So to create the dependency, there are certain steps that, first of all, we need to take, which, of course, I want you to journey along with me. First of all, I want us to add a column to the already existing columns that we have here within our table in our Primavera P6. So all I simply need to do to add a column is I right click within the table and then you can see the columns option. So click on the columns option. When you click on the columns option, the columns window will appear. So from this columns window, go to available options and then find. The find option is very okay if you can spell effectively or you know how to you know easily spell and be able to get the column that you're looking out for. But then sometimes it can be a bit confusing because some of us might not even remember if predecessor is a C or an S or how many S or how many Cs do we have. So usually I take the safer route. Also, what I prefer to do is I go to my available options, then I go to group and sort by, and then I click on list. With this, it would expand all these columns that you have here on the left-hand side, and it would ask, arrange them alphabetically. Note, that these items you're seeing here on the left are potential columns that we can add. While these ones you're seeing here on the right are the columns that are already existing within our table in Primavera P6. So now that I've been able to sort it alphabetically, all I simply need to do because predecessor begins with a P, I scroll down to where I'm able to see P. So I can see P now. The next thing is PR. So I can see from when I check all the items that starts with PR, the first one is predecessor details. The second one is predecessor, which is exactly what I'm looking for. All I simply need to do is I click in this add to list button to add it to the list of my existing columns. And because I want it to come after my original duration, so I, all I need to do is I select the predecessor that I've added. Then I click on this move down in list button so that I bring it down to after original duration. And once that is okay, I simply click on the okay button. So if you take a look at my table now, you can see I have the predecessors column, which is exactly what is showing up here within my table. I'll just expand the column a bit. So you can see I have the predecessor column show up within my column. Okay, so to assign the predecessor, there are different ways we can do that. But if you notice, I've been trying to keep it as simple as possible. And if you notice, I've been using the right click function. So usually I tell planners, or I tell anybody learning physics that right clicking will literally save your life. So at any point in time, you don't know what to do, or you've forgotten a particular process, simply right click. There's a chance that whatever you're looking for, you see it once you right click. And notice that that's literally what I've been doing, right clicking, right clicking, right clicking, right clicking because most of those functions can actually be done using the right-click function. So again, in order to assign my predecessors, I can right-click within my table. I mean, any activity at all in your table, make sure it's an activity you're right-clicking on. I can right-click within my table. Then you can see an assign button here. I go to assign. And from here, you can see predecessor. Or I can click on assign predecessors. Then the assign predecessors window pops up. All I simply need to do is I click and drag it to the bottom right of my screen. And then I may choose to expand it just a little bit uh, so that I can have a clearer view of what you have here in the assigned predecessors wing. Going forward, what I'll now need to do is I select the item from the table. Then I come to the assigned predecessors window. I select the predecessor and then I click on the assign button. However, before I do that, I also like to see my predecessor as assign them within my detail view. So to do that, I also make sure that I stay under the predecessors tab in my detail view so that as I assign the predecessors, I'll be able to see them show up not just in my table, but then also in my detail view as well as within my Gantt chart. 
this window is also very important, especially if there's an error. Let's say I make a mistake, for example, while assigning my predecessors, I can easily remove it here from my detail view. Because what some people will do is they will attempt to delete. And once they do that, you notice the activity itself gets deleted. But if you need to unlink, or maybe you created a wrong relationship and you need to remove it, that's the essence of this remove button that you're seeing here. And I'll show you how that works. So let's go back again to the brief. So this is the brief. And with this particular brief now, what I've done is I've taken a picture of it so that because I need to be able to show my full Primavera screen in this particular process. So I also encourage you to do the same. Either you take a snapshot or you have this brief in another window so you can see the relationships as we're trying to create it. Okay, good. So let's dive in now. So notice that from this, you can see that uh, the C1000 has no predecessor. So it means we're not going to assign any predecessor to C1000. Then the C1010, which is excavation, the predecessor is the C1000, that is site preparation. Then, of course, for foundation laying, the predecessor is C1010, which is excavation. And then also for utilities installation, the predecessor is C1020, which is foundation laying. So in a nutshell, they're actually linked serially like that. And that's also what we're going to do in this case. There's a faster way to do this, which I'll show you much more later, since we notice that they are all linked serially. But I just want to show you how to do the relationship one after the other. Then later, I'll show you how to do it in bulk. So we begin from excavation. Remember, our site preparation has no predecessor. So that's why we're beginning from excavation. Um, from the brief, we're told that the predecessor for excavation is C1000. So I come to this assigned predecessors window. I select the C1000, and then I click on this little green assign button. So the moment I do that, if you notice in the detail, it shows up that the predecessor for C1010 is C1000, which is site preparation. You also notice it shows up here in the predecessors portion, also showing me that the predecessor for C1010 is C1000. And if you check my Gantt chart, you can see there's a connecting arrow now between these two activities. I do same for foundation lane. So I select foundation lane. The predecessor is excavation. So I select excavation and then I assign. So let's assume I mistakenly, instead of doing this once, I mistakenly assigned it twice, which of course is what you're seeing here, excavation, excavation. You can also see it here, 1010, C1010. So I've done it twice. And the second one is wrong. So to remove the wrong relationship, I simply come to the detail view, I select the wrong one, which is this second one that I assigned. Then I click on the remove button, this remove button that you're seeing at the bottom. So when I click on it, it says, are you sure you want to remove the selected activity relationship? I simply click on yes and notice it is gone. So that's how to remove a wrong allocation. So that's why I told you it is best to stay within your predecessor's view so that you can unlink the activities when you do them wrongly. The next one is site utilities installation. Please note that we're keeping this quite simple. That's why we linked the activities serially. Don't expect that in every project that the activities will be linked in that particular sequence. No. So sometimes you may have an activity depending on two or three previous activities or 10 previous activities as the case may be. Sometimes you can also have an activity that has multiple dependencies. So it's dependent on more than three or four activities. And that's usually how it is, especially when you begin to deal with real life project. But then, of course, this will give you a sense as to how to understand the processes so that when you're faced with that, you know exactly what to do. Of course, you can also take a look at some of my other videos where I created a real life project that would also help to have a much more detailed understanding about all that we have been talking about. But like I said, I like to keep it simple and simple is usually better. So my C1030, the predecessor to my C1030, of course, is my C1020. So again, in the table, remember, I first click on C1030, then I come to the assigned predecessor, select C1020, and then I assign. And this is exactly what I'll do going forward. My framework erection is dependent on C1030. So I select C1030 and I assign. When my work construction, the predecessor is TC1040. I select C1040 and assign. In my roofing, the predecessor is wall construction. Then I assign. 
Then my electrical wiring, the predecessor is roofing. Once you've been able to do that, you notice that you'd have been able to create all of these dependencies and then your activities would of course be lined up in that particular order. And once you're done with that, all you simply need to do is you close the assigned predecessors window. Uh, however, I remember that I told you that earlier on, there's a faster way we can do this, which is actually what I like to do in most of my schedule. I actually link everything. And then where I need to make changes, if, for example, the activities are not sequentially linked, and I'm beginning to take a look at each of those activities and begin to make the adjustments one after the other. But in this case, that second step will not be necessary. So I just need to link everything at once. So what I need to do is I need to remove all these relationships, and then I'll show you how I link everything at once. Remember to remove the relationship, simply come to this remove button in the detail view and remove them. So I'm gonna remove them one after the other and then I'll show you the other way. Okay, now that I've unlinked all the activities, remember, this is a faster way to do it. All you simply need to do is select the first activity, which in this case is site preparation, up until through the very last activity. What I just did is I clicked on my shift button, then click on the last activity so that it selects everything. So you select the first one, hold down your shift button, click the last activity to select everything. So once you've selected everything again, you right click, and once you right click, you're going to see the link activities option here. So just click on link activities and Viola, you notice all the activities gets linked automatically. So, I mean, all the things we've been doing earlier on, I could just do it in like two or three clicks as the case may be. And so with that, it links all my activities. And remember, I told you this is what I normally do. Once I create all my activities, I link all of them at once. And then I begin to make adjustments because sometimes you may now notice that, uh, okay, this one, for example, C1020 may not be the predecessor. So I link it, I select the correct predecessor. But in many cases, most activities in schedule are usually finished to start and follow that sequence. So you notice that the edit you would do might just be for very few activities. And that probably will save you a lot of time than having to link them one after the other, like the way we did earlier on. So once you've been able to create the dependencies, you now schedule. The essence of the schedule is basically to stretch out these activities and then also show you the Gantt chart and then also show you the critical part. The schedule button is this one that looks like a clock in the tools bar. So when I click on it, now the shadow window pops up. I click on apply selected data date to all open projects, and then I click on schedule. So when I click on schedule, if you notice, is a serial relationship, which is what you're seeing here within the Gantt chart. And all my activities seem to be on the critical part. Of course, the reason is not far-fetched. The reason is because all the activities are linked serially, and that's why all of them are on the critical part. The activities on the critical part, usually Primavera will color them in red. Uh, the idea of the critical part is that this is the path with the longest duration. That's the part that determines the project duration. And then also any activity on this part must not be delayed because if you delay it, it's going to affect the finished date of the project. Now, of course, if you need to learn much more detail about it, you may simply want to sign up for the full course. Or, of course, you can also do a one-on-one -on -one training with me so that you're able to better understand the whole idea of the critical path analysis, float, and a couple of other tools and techniques that we use in being able to analyze our schedule to determine exactly where we are. So here we're taking a look at how to create the predecessors, and that's exactly what we have done in this lesson. How this particular lesson has been quite informative for you. I'll see you in the next class. Thank you so much for watching.